Hello everyone, it's Rebecca with a Bible art journaling challenge for you. And I am gonna show you how to sew in your Bible today. We Are Memory Keepers has this really cool set of tools that are called Sew Easy. And I'm gonna show you how to use them today. I've been looking forward to showing you how to use these for a while because they are just way too much fun. And we're going to be in Exodus today chapter 35 verses 25 through 29 and also chapter 36 verses 4 through 7. And I'm going to start by just splashing some color onto my page with a technique I've showed you before in a couple other videos which you can check out. And this is just really easy. I'm using some heavy body acrylic paint and I'm just spreading it on with a credit card to get some color down. I've used yellow ochre because it just has a bit of a golden feel to it. And one of the scriptures that I'm referring to here actually talks about the gold and silver and bronze, all these different gifts that were being brought. People were contributing for the tabernacle. They were contributing all of these beautiful things that they had made with the skills that they had for various crafts to weave things, make fine linens, and you know, make garments and brooches and you name it, all this beautiful stuff. And this is a section of scripture that really talks about creativity, which is quite fun. And it talks about sewing. So the yellow ochre acrylic paint is just a good version of kind of a golden color that I wanted to put down. And I didn't choose a actual metallic gold because I didn't really think it would help see the text through the page and I wanted to be able to see that text through it. But once I get that on, I will just give it a quick blast with my heat tool to make sure it's all nice and dry. And then I will show you how to sew in your Bible and read this verse to you. So much fun to do, you guys. So this is the Sew Easy tools. They come with a huge range and I'm actually going to link over on my blog to the entire set because there's not a ton of them but they they can do such a lot of things as you can see here as you roll it across your surface it will just pierce some holes and based on the head that you've got on your tool it will pierce holes into a certain design which of course then means that you can sew that specific design using your thread so there's some there that are for the pennants and for cute banners and all sorts of different stitches. And some of these will just do the one stitch, which you can see there with those big ones. And there are others which you can actually do multiple types of stitches with one head. And it will show you on the packaging how to actually organize your stitches so that you know how to do it and so you want to keep your packaging when you're finished I just cut my packaging up just to the section that I needed and it comes with a little head I didn't realize until after I was finished with this project that the end of your handle actually pops open and you can keep a needle right in there and it comes with a blunt needle that you can purchase as part of the set and this piercing mat is actually a really critical part of these cool tools because they actually create a foam texture for you to press just the right amount and have these holes appear as you push. So I've given it firm pressure and I've gone around and I just wanted to create kind of a, a wavy little line that was very, very simple with this simplest of them. And this is some of my embroidery floss. I have this set here that I got from family members and inherited it as a child. It was one of my first art supply things that I had and I was so inspired to just look at all the colors and I still really enjoy opening this box and playing around with the different colors. So I, I will link to the closest I can find of the colors that I've used but because these verses talk about blue and purple and scarlet I will pick some colors that are similar to that as you can see and they're like a six strand of this floss and I'm going to use all of the strands because I want it to feel a little bit bulky but it won't actually take up much space in my bible which is quite fun. People often ask about this bible and whether I intend to be able to read the words in this bible and if I'm respecting this bible I promise you that I respect every one of these words. This is a really important 
book to me. It is the most important book and I treat it with the utmost respect. What I am doing here is I'm creating in the pages of my Bible specifically to connect with what's going on in scripture. I find that when I create in my Bible, I'm able to really understand scripture in a new way because I'm taking time to really focus in on a particular set of scriptures and what they mean to me and how they apply to my own life. And I'm hoping that I can share that process with you. You'll find that I often do things that may look as though I've covered the text and can't read it anymore. I think there's only one or two pages where I've accidentally covered a little bit, but for the most part, all of the pages of creativity that I do, I do with the intention of being able to still read the text. That said, I have other Bibles that I use specifically for reading and for studying, and this is essentially my art journal devotional Bible. This is the one that I use to create and spend time in God's Word, specifically with connecting my creative side of my life with my time with God. And I would really encourage you to come on this journey with me if you think this would be something that would add to your time with God and not be a distraction for you. I can't quite express in words how being creative in the pages of my Bible has helped me to connect with the Word of God in a new way, but it has been amazing and I obviously encourage you to join me in this process as we do this. And if you feel uncomfortable doing it in a Bible, go ahead and use a journal, but just spend time in God's Word, learning from Him, learning about His Word, and creating what it is that you are gathering from your time in the Word. As you can see, I've started this sewing process and I will get into the details of how I've done that here shortly as you see me get a bit closer with the camera so that you can see exactly how I'm doing this. I've just given myself about the length of where I've scored the paper or pierced it and then another half again and that's given me just enough thread to be able to do this and now I'm just tying off a very loose knot the really important thing is, is that you need to be very gentle with your holes because Bible pages are very, very thin. So just take your time and be gentle with it and don't pull tight without holding on to your hole so that it won't tear. And then you can gently create something that is really beautiful and will just sit there and it really doesn't need to be really tight and tied off. It won't go anywhere. It's just sitting in your Bible page and it is so much fun to see how beautiful it is. So now I'm gonna pierce my second set of threaded holes and I've gone over some sections and just gone ahead and added another random set. I wasn't really going for any particular design. I could have been a little bit more, I guess, adventurous and used one of my other designs that were a bit more complex but I didn't want to take your valuable time on camera and I also felt like having something really simple and understated here might be the way forward for a simple tutorial and for my reminder of what the scripture meant to me. So as you can see I'm going in the hole and being careful as the thread's really big there to just help it through the hole as I go and once I get it in there, leave a little extra at the end. This is just basic stitching. And I'm gonna go back through the next hole up. Oh, and you can see there that I've actually pulled the thread a bit too far through. So I've done it again and then I'm bringing it back up through the second hole and just holding it firmly as I do that. So as I do this, I'm gonna go back down through the same first hole again, just avoiding the first thread. And as I pull this, I'm doing it really gently so I don't tear the hole. And now I'm going back up the second hole. So I'm just going around it a couple of times and that seems sufficient for me to then go on to the rest of my holes. So as you watch me do this, I will just quickly read to you Exodus 35 verses 25 through 29 says, All the skilled women, 
spun with their hands and brought what they had spun in blue and purple and scarlet material in fine linen. All the women whose hearts stirred with the skill spun the goat's hair. The rulers brought the onyx stones and the stones for setting for the ephod and for the breastplate and the spice and the oil for the light and for the anointing oil and for the fragrant incense. The Israelites and all the men and women whose hearts moved them to bring material for all the work which the Lord had commanded through Moses to be done, brought a free will offering to the Lord. Now, before I read from the next set of scriptures, I just want to show you what I've done here is I've gone back through my second to last hole, and that gives me a little bit of strength here. I'm just helping it through that hole, being gentle again. And as I get the thread just completely in that set there and pulled as gently tightly shut as I can. I put the needle back through that little loop that's there. As you can see, I'm showing you with my needle and I put it through there and then I go over the left and under the right of the loop, over the left, under the right. And I'm holding it on top with my finger to just sort of pull it tight, but be very gentle. And then I'm giving that a good clip with my scissors. I really like these scissors. I've been enjoying them. So as I get finished with that, then I'll move on to my third and last color, which is that purple color. And I'm just giving good firm pressure as I go around and pierce the holes through to my Bible page. This really is something you can practice on anything if you want. And this has so many applications with paper crafting, making cards, doing it with art journaling, all sorts of things that you can use these little piercer heads with. And the handle comes with this particular head that I've used today. And then you can just buy all sorts of little heads and there's templates and flosses and different things that you can get with them. Now I've just run this thread right through my bottom or sorry, my top tooth and my tongue, pushing really hard with my tongue against my tooth. And it creates, you know, sorry, it creates a little bit of spit on the end of my thread, as well as creating a flat surface with the floss. And that gives me just enough space to just thread it right through the end of my needle and I'm good to go. This is a blunt needle and is perfect for this project. So you will just watch me do this next set here and I'm going to do another little loop. I'm just tying a basic knot here and I will then tie another knot which I'm going to put toward the side that I'm going to be going ahead and threading with because that's the side that I'm closest to. And that's just, you know, another option for threading this. I just wanted to show you some different ways that you can tie off the ends. And I hope that you've seen that here in this tutorial. So Exodus 36 verses four through seven, it says, and all the skillful men who were performing all the work of the sanctuary came each from the work which would, that he was performing. And they said to Moses, the people are bringing much more than enough for the construction work, which the Lord commanded us to perform. So Moses issued a command and a proclamation was circulated throughout the camp saying, let no man or woman any longer perform work for the contributions of the sanctuary. Thus the people were restrained from bringing any more for the material they had was sufficient and more than enough for all the work to perform it. I remember as a teenager being absolutely enraptured by the concept that there were so many people that were creative in this environment that all they had to do was say, hey, we need some creative things for what God's work is. And suddenly all the creative people came out of the woodworks and there was more than enough. And they had to actually ask people to stop being creative because there was such a creative flow. That is amazing. I want to really encourage you to not step away or shy away from using your gifts for God and just challenge you to think, how can I use these gifts to encourage and bless other people and be a blessing to those around me? 
So that is just the simple message that I get when I read this. And the blessing of being in community with other people who are also creative is so valuable and important. So this is really simple and straightforward. I'm not associated with We Are Memory Keepers in any way. I just absolutely love these tools. And I, again, I'll link to this whole entire set of the So Easy stitch piercing set over on my blog because it's just so much fun. And they actually also do a sew ribbon and sew stamper set, which are also pretty fun. I haven't gotten a chance to get my hands on any of them yet, but I'm just trying to collect this full set before I move on. And I am really enjoying it. It's got some guides and tips and I'll link to them over on the blog as well so that you guys can have as best use as possible with this. So that's it guys. It's your turn to create. I can't wait to see what you do to express the beauty of creativity in community and all that God can do through us as we create. Please come join me on my blog, leave me a comment, join me on the Facebook group or Google Plus community and I cannot wait to see you. See you guys very soon.